I have written 11 books, but each time I think they are going to find out now. I have run a game on everybody, and they are going to find me out. Maya Angelou This was said by one of the most prolific American poets, and an award winning author of her acclaimed 1969 memoir, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. What Maya Angelou was experiencing here is a psychological phenomenon known as the imposter syndrome. We as humans have been born into this world with creative flares. We are, after all, a creator of our own world. And when we finally achieve a creation, we psychologically set a standard for ourselves, a standard that will gradually put us in the shadows of our own. In this video, I'll explore the psychological phenomenon and how one can overcome the wall we have mentally built for ourselves. To begin, we must ask ourselves what exactly is imposter syndrome. Well, imposter syndrome is when an individual is unable to internalize their accomplishment, despite the external evidence of their competence. Those who experience imposter syndrome remain convinced they are frauds and do not deserve the success they have achieved. They dismiss their success as only a sheer luck, timing, or because they were able to deceive others to think they are more intelligent and competent than they believe themselves to be. The first step to overcoming imposter syndrome is to realize that every creative personnel has experienced the same feeling. We hear our own constant monologue of self-doubt, but never anyone else's, making it all too easy to assume that nobody else has one. As the saying goes, we compare our insides with other people's outsides and judge ourselves lacking as a consequence. But the imposter phenomenon lurks in every creative mind such as authors, artists, musicians, entrepreneurs and even athletes. And with today's hyper-competitive, economically insecure world, the imposter syndrome lurks even in the minds of young people, albeit it might be the littlest of grades or being accepted to a good university. And it's also a problem that rendered more acute by social media which encourages us to present to the world the highlights of our lives, rather than the messy psychological reality we live in. To feed off these emotions can only result in one possibility, and that is failure to the highest degree. But to weigh on the possibility of maybe succeeding again can already set us on a path of two roads. The road to high success or road of failure. After all, the riskiest road is the most rewarding one. The ever-present feelings of fraudulence will never go away. The constant self-doubt will forever nag at the back of your mind. One can only overcome it by openly accepting for what it is. Talk openly about the problem to the ones that accept you for who you really are. And change your thoughts slowly over time and take the risk despite the inner voice telling you you will fail. Turn that loud nagging voice into more of a quiet hum of contemplation. Remove that perfectionism and set yourself for failure. Embrace the feeling of humility and be kind to yourself no matter the result. As seen by the Dunning-Kruger effect, a test performed in 1999 by Justin Kruger and David Dunning from Cornell University. The test was aimed to solidify the hypothesis that people who lack their skills for something often lack the awareness of their incompetence. The result of the test proven the hypothesis was correct. In short, the truly incompetent rarely worry about being truly incompetent. And if you take this test into retrospect, the ones that suffer this sense of inferiority, despite their success, often than not, they are the ones more capable than they expect themselves to be. After all, the only one that is limiting you is no one else but yourself. <laughs> 